Wanna dance? You're in the right place with DJ Irvin C's global radio show. Looking for the perfect beat. Hey people, I'm DJ Irvin C uh, from Leuven, Belgium. And I'm going to show you how to beat grit your tracks. Or at least uh, how I do it to beat grit my tracks. Uh, of course, uh, a good beat grit is the most important part. Especially, of course, when you are auto syncing. Uh, so you need to know that your uh, grit is perfectly in line with the beat and of course also the measures and the phrases because that is also very important. Okay, how do you do that? Uh, I got several tracks so we're just gonna do it uh, like it's going so maybe this video will take a bit long but uh, just keep it from time to time if you find it too long. Uh, but I, I got a few tracks that are uh, irritating to beat grit so uh, we're gonna see it okay i first uh, drag my track to my deck you only see my deck uh, first thing you notice here is that okay your first beat grit marker is exactly on the right spot uh, visually at least uh, but you see that there is this little piece before that that uh, the track uh, starts well, it doesn't start, but there is some more wave. So we're going to change that later uh, to put the load uh, location on the right place because it's a bit irritating that there is a little piece before the track, but you need it. You will see that later on why you need that. Uh, I hope so in one of the tracks we're going to show you that it's very essential that we have a bit before it because otherwise we have to work around to put our grid on the correct place. So, because a lot of tracks are cut too precise in the beginning uh, and leave a little piece uh, out of it, so that can be a problem. Uh, so, we don't gonna change the load uh, queue right now. We do that when everything is set right and I show you right away how. Okay, we're gonna play this track. You play it. When you gotta put it a little less louder so uh, you can hear my voice over it put my voice a bit louder yeah okay the first thing you need to do is uh, stay in the beginning of your track not the very first beginning but go a bit further you don't need to be right on the measure or something or whatever and you put a loop that's the most sure thing um, to stay in the beginning because sometimes it can take a while before you can put it right I'm gonna put it a bit louder for myself Okay, what you hear right now is that uh, this is the automatic beat grid and you hear right away that you hear the click on. I didn't tell you first. You need to put this on. There's a button with a small headphone. Now you hear it's gone. I'm gonna turn it on now. That's a tick, uh, tick, tick, that's over it. And that needs to be perfectly in line with our beat. So we're gonna try that right now. It's 80 or 90 percent or maybe even 100 percent of the time you gotta go to the left uh, that's my experience I, I think it's a problem with tractor that it doesn't put its grid if it would automatically put its grid a bit more to the left i think it would be more precise uh, with the default automatic analyzation okay here we go just so uh, you have two buttons over here very important to know this is to relocate the grid to the left this is to relocate the grid to the right and these i come back later those are to change the bpm of your track because also the bpm is not always correct and it's very important certainly when working with loops that your bpm is as accurate as it can be okay we're gonna put now the grid in line with the beat i want to let you listen to this
that's too far. So w- there are two locations right now and none of both are exactly spot on it. You can hear it that it's a few beats correctly on it and then it's w- a bit behind or before that. So listen to it. You hear it that the first one or two or three beats are not exactly on it. I can go one back, but then it's the other way around. You hear it, the beginning is a bit off, the middle is okay, and the end is uh, again off. So it's, it's the bottoms are, there, there's some kind of a step to go back and forth with those bottoms, and it's just not small enough to get spot on it. But it's not that big of a problem because, uh, you know, bases of two tracks interfere with each other. So it's not because both tracks are exactly spot on the beat that you don't need to correct it. So you still need to correct it to get a a very clean sounding beat. So uh, I still prefer the other one. So I go one back and now it's uh, as spot on as we can in the beginning of the track. Okay, second thing we're gonna need to check now, or we could already done that in the beginning because it starts with a beat. That is, look at the, uh, I'm gonna put it back to four. In the beginning, put it to four. Look at the measures right now at the counter, one, 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 four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's the really start of a phrase, so that is good. Um, pay attention, it's not always like that, that the first beat of the track is the first measure. So it depends a bit on how the beat track starts. But here we find. Then you always, always, always need to check if your uh, phrases are still matching when you go to a new start. So I click now here on the beginning of a new piece of the track. Okay, look again, we are listening, look at the, the counter, on the measure counter, at what uh, uh, step it will uh, start. Two, three, four, oh, sorry, miscounted. One, two, three, four, one. That's exact good. So that is good. The, when the, the new part of a song starts, you're still at the correct phrase at the beginning of the phrase. Uh, out of habit, you I check it at multiple locations because there are tracks where it changes, where they miss a beat or skip a beat or something because they don't know it over deliberately to play us a bit, but uh, you need to check it. Yeah, that's right. Look here, there's a first sort of exit beat coming and then it starts. So we're gonna look at it again. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, boom. And there you have it. That's still good. We go further in the track. And again, one, one, two, three, four. That's also good. Because you see there's some kind of an exit uh, beat. And this is the first one. And it matches up with my measure. Pretty certain that everything is okay now on the level of beats. Uh, so we go at the very end, about the end. We put it back in the loop of four or eight. It's sometimes better four. It's not exactly on it, but that's the problem in the beginning. We didn't get it exactly on it neither. So. What we can do at the end is not change the, uh, the the layer of the beat grid on beats with the above buttons, but we're gonna change the uh, BPMs a bit. And I know a lot of people say, well, oh, just press uh, 122 here and it's good. Uh, or there, exactly. Uh, no, because if you suspect that, you never know at what speed the originator, the producer made the track. So you really need to use your ears to hear it. Okay, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller or bigger, or longer. Or... That's next to it, so I go back one to have the same, and one further. 
that's sounding much better to me. I go back one. That was the original, the automated BPM. And you hear it's a bit next to it. That's one too far. It's, it's very important to get your BPM right also. You, sh you see that's not changing a lot, but it has changed a bit. Because if your BPM is not right, when you put it in a loop, it's, you're gonna hear it, it's a loop. Because it does, it's not exactly right. So uh, you should not hear that it's looping. So for me that's okay, so we're gonna stop it and then you're gonna lock the file. Always, always lock the file. That way you can't change it uh, accidentally or, or whatever, whatever uh, situation. And uh, you know that you beat gridded it manually, so you, you know you don't need to redo it unless you did it wrong afterwards, if you notice it. Okay, next track. Uh, no, I'm forgetting something. Okay, now we go back because we have a little piece here that when you click on it, it doesn't start at the right beat, so it's a bit uh, uh, irritating if you want to start it at the right place. So you have to change the load uh, queue. So how are we going to do that? We go at queues, you click here at queues, you click, always click on one to make sure that we are at the first beat grid, then you click on two to set in the second beat grid, and you see it's marked queue here, and then you change it to load. So, uh, what track is it? You got my body. So now, um, first load in another track and then load back in that track I just fixed. When you load it now in, you see that it's not put on the beginning of the, the WAV file, but at the beginning of the very first beat. Uh, that's something, it was only a small piece here, but there are tracks that are much larger. Next track. Okay, that's a harder track. So check in begin if it's uh, at 111 when the track starts. It's not always the case, so... Oh, the track is wrong. Oh, well, not wrong, but they wanted to start at another uh, beat. Then 111, that happens. All your grid is starting wrong. I'm hoping to get a track where we can change that. Two, three, four, one. So the measures are put, uh, the phrases are good in place. Put a loop. Check if it's spot on the grid. worry it the metronome is uh, the tick is uh, sometimes it just completely disappears but sometimes you can't get it away then you have to just listen if it's exact on it or not so you usually listen if the the, the tick is gone that's the best thing but it depends on the frequencies too so it's not always the case Almost clean. Listen to the bass. It's it's almost clean. That's the best I think. Okay, checking phrases again. Four, one, two, four, one, two, three, four. You see, it doesn't start at a. F oh, wait, it does. Yeah. Two, three, four, one. One. Yep. 
check the BPM. You only click one click, you listen, and don't forget when don't click too fast because uh, the the latency of the sound cards uh, has an impact on this. Uh, I'm at uh, 256. Um, a buffer of 256 at 44.1 uh, kHz. So it's, uh, it's what is it, like 10 milliseconds or so. But normally I, I go at 512, a buffer of 512. And then it takes a while before you get the change information. So don't click one to three times if it's not fast. It takes some time before you hear the difference. So don't forget that. But you will hear it soon enough, uh, fast enough, you know. Click, wait and listen. That's way off. It's either this or this. And you hear that the bass is much deeper in this, so I leave it here. Lock it, stop play, next track. Yeah, was the beginning right? Yeah, the beginning was good. Okay. This sounds like the, gr the grit is a half a tempo, half a beat uh, next to it, but we need to verify that later on. You, you hear it's not right. Uh, we're gonna move to the beginning. But here it is. So, it looks like it should start here, because there is something, you see a bit line up there, but it starts there and it sounds off a half a bit, but it's, it's correct. Well, as far as I know, see it, yeah, it's right on it. Take a beat, put it in the loop, check if it's on it. Always, I always, always click the, I don't say, oh, that's good, go ahead. No, I always click on it to see if it, I don't get it one or two clicks better. And I usually do that to go much next to it and then come back. That's about on it. And now, I think this is good, but uh, still, I'm gonna go one click back. You hear it one or two beats besides, so I come back to what I thought it was good and go one further. Having my doubts, coming one back. The bass here is much cleaner. You, you hear bass here, it's more, more deeper. So that this is good for me. Get it out of the loop. <coughs> Checking my phrase again. Three, four, one. Yep. Next phrase. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Perfect. Put it back in the loop at the end. Worse, coming back to original and one further. See, this the original is a bit off. I go a bit longer. Longer is uh, slower, I believe, in BPM. Yeah, one click longer. Lock it. Stop playing. Next track. I think it was good in the beginning. No, it wasn't. Look here again. You can do that while you're playing too, but then you need to change screens and so, because I usually hide this part because I have four decks. I want to have more of my playlist. So um, I, I make sure to do this uh, when I'm 
all my heaves and just uh, checking them. So cube again, click on Q1, don't always, always do that. Click on to Q2, then it's on the exact spot as Q1 and change Q2 to load. Put it back to grid. Next track. Maybe I'm looking for something specific. Uh, yeah. This is a nasty one. You see uh, Q.1 is the beat grid marker is uh, at the fourth beat. So if we go get back, as we, the first beat of the track starts as minus one, two, one, while the fifth beat starts at one, two, three, four, fifth beat starts at one, one. So clearly there's something wrong, probably. Uh, okay, first we're gonna check the, we're gonna check the phrase, start of the phrase. Yeah, you see, the phrase here starts at uh, the fourth measure, beat one. So that's no good. So the uh, outer grid of tractor has it wrong in this case. Okay, how are we gonna solve that? Go to the beginning, delete the uh, recycle bin. Click, 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 click. You could try, so I don't know why it is, but it's it has analyzed automatically, but again, if you click the recycle bin and then click auto, that's the exact same thing as he does with auto, then sometimes it is correct, but in this case not. So it's still the beat uh, starts at beat 5, which is wrong. Okay, so we really need to do this manually. Click again on the recycle bin so we have no beat grid, or there is a grid, but uh, not starting at the right position. You're gonna put the beat in the beginning. So. Normally it was cor about correct there, and then you click this uh, beat grid marker, this sign. Click it, and then the beat one will start there. Look at the counter; it's one, one, one. So that's good. But and then from here on, our process to uh, put it in the correct spot uh, starts all over again. You may want to check now if the um, if the phrases start at the right point. So we're gonna do that because it's not always the case. Two, three, four, one. Yeah. Look at it. When the new phrase starts, it's nine one one. That's very good. Go to the beginning, play, put it in the loop. But now, because we put the beat grid uh, on a manual spot visually, you can hear it's way off right now. It's really in the sides. So now we need to correct more than uh, normally. Okay, this is the second thing I was searching for. So uh, the first thing was that the beat was completely started at the wrong spot, but there's a, a double thing here, and that's probably why the beat started on the wrong place too. Uh, I can click as long as I want to the left, because it's not on the spot. It will not go any further. That's, they changed that in one of the versions of a couple of years ago. You could go further before that the track starts. I don't know why they done it, but it's irritating. So we got to work around this. So I, the thing is, I can't get it right now, right on the beat, because I can't go any further than the beginning of the track. I can't go to here. Several, a lot of years ago, you could do that with the beat grid marker, but it's no longer possible. So the only way to get around this is to uh, put yourself at the second beat, and try to be as precise as you can, and add a second beat grid marker with the special bottom I showed you uh, for the first one. So now we have two Q points, Q points, one for the start of the track and start of the beat grid, but with the second one, I can uh, put uh, a second point of reference to change my beat grid. Um, it's a bit like floating beat grids, but not really because it's a... Uh, so you can use that also when you have a track that has various speeds or when the, the beats are not... the phrases are not correct. So sometimes they skip a, a beat, only a measure, 
so uh, your phrases at the end are not correct, but in the beginning they are, then you can use this technique to put it back into line. So, uh, we got to start our loop back again. Now we have a second beat grid marker. So everything that comes after that second beat grid marker, we can, can go further back. And this is what we're going to do now. You hear the difference. Eh? I'm not on it yet. This sounds good. This is about the best I can get it. So that's why you need two beat grid markers. So when the really beginning of the track is being, it's just according to me, I'm, I'm not sure, but for me, the beginning of the track has just cut off a few milliseconds. They use some kind of, a, I don't know, automatic start finder of your track or they, uh, or well, maybe it's, I, I don't really know, they cut it manually or something. But it's when you don't have just enough information at the beginning of the track, you need to add a second beat grid marker so you can put it right on top of it. Now we're going to check the phrases again. Correct. I'm not really convinced if my beat grid is on it. But it can happen that it's clearly better in the beginning. Okay, that's better. It's not. You can still hear it, so it's not really good, but it's maybe the track. Yeah, original was best. There we go, lock it. Okay, try another one. That looks weird too, but I suppose it will be right. Yep, another fine example. Uh, again, when you see that uh, the first beat grid marker is, is should be at the fifth beat, but it's not because there's a second problem. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that it's uh, it's put on half a beat. So, and it's because it does a click or something in the beginning, so the automatic uh, beat grid from Tractor is completely off here, or half a beat off, and then maybe as a follow to that uh, full uh, measure. So again, here uh, we need to do what we just did. You put it right in a place where you think the beat should be. You click the, the recycle button or delete. And then you click the first beat grid marker, beat grid marker. That's good. Now we're gonna play it. It's a lot off now, but better than what we had uh, next. So because we put it manually based on our vision, but it's you know these wave are not always uh, wave hues are not always exact. So you need to check it uh, using your ears. Yep. 
everything just as it. Checking phrases. One. Uh, no, one. Yep. And it's on exact the first beat. Good. Next phrases. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Excellent. Again at the end. We already had a hard time in the beginning, so I don't expect anything else here. Well, usually, mostly you don't need to change the BPM, but you better check it because sometimes you, well, maybe uh, one or two tracks out of ten, you need to change it a little bit. Okay, happy with that. Click lock. And another one. Just keep on going. I need to do it anyway. There, you see that we already have a piece in front of it that we need to change the... Oh, same track. Wait a minute. Forgot to change that. So again, to Q point. Um, yeah, once your track is lock, locked, you can't change your grid, of course. You see all the bottoms are grayed out. So you, if you hear later it happens sometime that it's not well put, you need to turn it off again because before you can change it. So I turn it back off now or lock on. Uh, but the cue points you can change, that doesn't matter. Click at 1 always to be on the right spot of cue point number 1, the start of your beat grid. Click on 2 to generate a new cue point and change the cue point to load. So when the next time you're loading your track, you know it's going to be exactly at your first beat. Change back to grids, load another track. This sounds uh, half a beat off again, but I, I think it's right. You notice that as soon as a beat starts, yes, one. Yeah, so we're not a half a beat off, but we are off with a few milliseconds. So again, we're gonna put it right. Look, we have again the same problem as long I can click continuously on it, you don't hear it changing. And that's again the same problem as we had before. There's just, there's being cut off a piece in the beginning. So with a, with a wave of something that the beats can't see and that they check at the minimum level or whatever. So again, we'll put it on the second beat grid marker. Well, beat grid, beat, and put a beat grid marker in it. And then we can adjust it again. Put a loop on it. Yeah, not here because there's no beat. Check the phrases. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, we're way off because again we put it manually in there. Too far. hear myself clicking on, on the mouse. No, not happy. Sometimes you don't hear it anymore and you just go up, go really next to it so you can hear it clearly and then come back. Keep pressing and release it when you think you're on it. I think that's about the best. We're gonna pick another piece of the track. Yeah, it's not getting any better. Check phrases. Three, two, yep. Next phrase. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Put it in a loop. Change your BPM. Yep. 
that was two clicks off. Same thing again, if you go backwards, I probably won't make it. See, so I can click whatever I want, I won't go back. So, pause, get to the beginning, put a second marker up the line, click go. Checking one, yep, there's two. One. Yep, one more. Lock. I uh, think I had in the beginning. No, I think I have them all. Checking. Yeah, there's one. No, we had them all. It's done. Thank you very much for watching me. I hope you learned something about it. Uh, don't forget, uh, you need this to have your phrases right, your beats right, your loops especially, because they are all based on the beat grid, to have them correct and not sounding like a loop. Um, you need to do this also for auto-syncing, which I do. That doesn't mean you don't need to uh, correct them anymore. I correct about every mix I do. Uh, I still need to correct because it's not only to be right on top of each other, but also to keep the sound right. You can hear if you go on spot or a bit besides it, the bass will clink much, will sound much better. And that's why you need to correct them all the time. So, uh, well, while you're mixing, when it's locked, then it should be okay for the rest of your track, unless you didn't check your BPM speed, which I done with every track here. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Wanna dance? You're in the right place with DJ Irvin C's global radio show. Looking for the perfect beat. DJ Irvin C's radio show, looking for the perfect beat, a various mix of deep house, house, tech house, techno, and hard techno. In need for more club music? Check out my SoundCloud and YouTube channels. Search for DJ Irvin C.